Hello everyone! In this episode, you'll learn how to use fixatives and varnishes. I invited Ed S. Brickler, um, the technical consultant from Chartpack Inc., to explain the difference between varnishes and fixatives and learn how to use them uh, properly. If you are an artist or art enthusiast, you must learn about your art materials as much as you can to create permanent works of art. Visual artists who do acrylic, watercolor, pastel and oil painting, as well as any kind of drawing, uh, will benefit from the following information the most. If you'd like to watch more valuable uh, videos like this one or uh, listen to the podcast episodes, don't forget to subscribe to Hooked on Art podcast wherever you get your podcast. Thanks so much. Find me on Instagram and Facebook. Please welcome my guest, Ed Brickler. <laughs> oh, welcome okay. to my show, you to Ed. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for inviting me to this interview. I appreciate it very much. For those who don't know you, how do you introduce yourself? Or just introduce yourself to... Okay. Um, my name is Ed Brickler. Uh, middle initial S. And I always, everybody always says, oh, middle initial S. Well, my father's name was the same, except he didn't have a middle initial and they never wanted to call me Junior. Mm -hmm. So I became Edward S. And everybody just calls me Ed. Uh, but I've been in the art materials industry for 35 years. Uh, I started with Kohenor in 1986. Um, prior to that, I actually worked 13 years in um, heat transfer in the engineering field. I started out as, as a technical person at uh, Kohenor and then started lecturing on pen and ink and automated drafting. And then from there, it went into art materials because I was a painter. I was an artist. So it just kept developing. So I ended up you know, being the art materials consultant. And uh, I eventually wrote a book, which was um, making art materials and techniques for today's artists. Uh, that was back in 2011. Today, now I'm semi-retired and I still work 20 hours as a technical consultant. And uh, help develop some products and um, spending more time doing my own painting, which is really nice. Oh, okay. Well, today we are going to focus on varnishes and fixatives since you have expertise in, in this field because yes. it's very confusing for artists to figure out how to use them properly. And yes. whenever I go to an art supply store, I watch other artists looking at the rows of uh, fixatives, not knowing which one to pick because of the labels for the most. Right. It's very confusing. Yeah. What's the difference between varnishes and fixatives? First of all, you have a fixative and you have a varnish. They're two different, two different animals completely. A varnish is what we would use on a painting, whether it be acrylic or oil, and it is removable. Mm -hmm. So what a varnish does, it is a protective coat that goes on top of the painting so that as the painting ages and of course it sits in the environment, it's gonna collect uh, what I call environmental smudge. When you get in your car and you, see a speck on your windshield and you go to rub it and all of a sudden you see this smear and you go, oh, I got to clean the inside of my windshield. That's environmental smudge. It comes mm -hmm. from, you know, oils in the air, from everything just floating around. And of course that will get on the surface of a painting. Mm -hmm. Now that's important to protect the painting because if you don't have the varnish on there, that smudge can become part of the actual painting, whether it be an oil or an acrylic. Mm -hmm. And then it's very difficult to clean them. Mm -hmm. So varnishes are made to be removable. So we can re clean the painting, remove them. Um, usually done by a conservator. I mean, I just did one, I just uh, did some conservation on a painting I did from 1983. It is a protection. Okay. Um, it's a very tedious process and you have to, first of all, know what varnish is on there. Mm -hmm. Now, back in 1983, there was pretty much 
um, only two or three types of varnish. And in varnishes, there are different resins mm -hmm. that are used. And that's what a varnish is. It's, it's basically a resin, which uh, natural resins come from the sap of trees. So the most uh, prevalent one today that's still used is um, Damar. In the past, we had Copal and Mastic, uh, but then uh, in about the 80s, they started going out of favor. Uh, one, they became way too expensive. And uh, so for instance, you know, you live in Florida, so instead of using a Damar varnish, a Copal varnish was used because uh, it was less susceptible to humidity. Mm -hmm. Because humidity could make uh, a varnished painting, uh, especially with Damar, feel sticky. So mm -hmm. they would use copal rather than Damar. Natural resins have been now superseded by uh, synthetic resins. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things about a natural resin like Damar is that they tend to yellow. They tend to discolor. And then they also get brittle. In the painting that I restored, uh, the sky was getting green wow. <laughs> so it was time to remove that old varnish and uh and then put on a more what i call a modern varnish mm -hmm. we call those picture varnishes those are varnishes that would be made with um either a, a ketone type uh we call it a ketonic i call it a ketonic resin which is really synthetic damar mm -hmm. or um there are acrylic resins that are dissolved in mineral spirits and that is probably the most prevalent one, the most used one that's out there. Uh, and uh, they've been around um, for quite some time simply, but never used. They actually started out as paint, as acrylic paint first, as a solvent-based acrylic paint. But uh, today we use them as uh, a brush-on varnish or a spray-on varnish. And uh, those are, when they dry, they dry clear. They're somewhat more flexible. So you're not gonna end up with the discoloration of your painting. Um, in fact, I was listening to uh, a conservator from the Art Institute in Chicago, and he said, you know, here's a, you know, somebody that, from a museum that says, you know, stay away from Damar. You know, Damar is old, it's old, it's passe, it's, it's done, it's run its course. What you're saying is that the synthetic varnish is, is best is that it is right? much better yes yeah, okay. yeah yeah when you have a synthetic varnish it's not going to discolor mm -hmm. um, and it's not going to craze if it gets bumped you know, get craze means it's okay. cracking uh so uh yes it's a much better varnish especially today we have bright colors and we're painting differently we're not just doing you know kind of a dreary landscape that so what if it turns yellow or a, especially a still life or even a portrait? It doesn't matter that much because it warms it up. Mm -hmm. It actually makes it look better. Um, but you can do that in the painting process and then use a varnish that's going to stay. Also, uh, these varnishes that used resins uh, used turpentine, uh, which was is more toxic mm -hmm. uh, than mineral spirits. So Today, the modern varnishes use mineral spirits. So when you're gonna remove a varnish, you always have to know what the varnish is so you could use that solvent. So for instance, if the painting has the mar, you have to use uh, turpentine to remove the varnish. Mm -hmm. And you have to do this, it's, it's a specialized way. If you people that haven't done it or are not used to doing it um, should actually proceed with caution, okay? Mm -hmm. and. Uh, what I would say is get some old paintings at a flea market or <laughs> at a thrift shop and practice, okay, mm -hmm. or, uh, and do it that way. Now, with the modern varnishes, you can use mineral spirits to clean your brushes to uh, also, that will also remove the uh, varnish. Mm -hmm. So uh, those are the, the types of varnishes that we have today. Now, a fixative is different than a varnish because a fixative is used on paper. It's used on an absorbent surface, on drawings. Um, although on a drawing, say if you have a colored pencil drawing, 
And now you have where the passage of color pencil is, is non-absorbent because it's wax. Mm -hmm. And then you have the paper, which is absorbent. So uh, you want to use a fixative on that because uh, the fixatives work well with paper. You definitely don't want to use a varnish on there. Uh, varnishes are a little too heavy. Now in fixatives, uh, the one is workable fixative. Mm -hmm. Workable fixative was made for use um, actually, it was developed uh, by Grumbacher way back when they were working with Disney. And so when Fantasia and um, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, I believe, um, when they did those cells in gouache, now gouache re-wets when you wet it, hit it with mm -hmm. water. So what they would do is spray each, a, a, put gouache down on the, on the cell, which is basically a transparent um, sheet. Uh, they would put the gouache on, they would spray it with a workable fixative. That would seal the gouache so they could work on top of it and not re-wet it. So they were able to layer colors. Mm -hmm. And that's where a, how it became called workable fixative because mm -hmm. you could work on top of it. Mm -hmm. it's, um, it's, it's just for a fixative for it's for drawings. And it has enough matting, matting agent and that gives it some texture. Mm -hmm. So for instance, if I'm, spray a say you've done a colored pencil rendering and now you can't go any further because you've got so much wax on mm -hmm, there if mm -hmm. you spray it with some workable fixative you can work on top of it yeah but what if i spray it with the final fixative is it a bad okay. thing um well you can use the final fixative but a, a the, the workable fixative has more tooth to it. Okay. So you, you have more tooth. So you have more like the texture of the paper. You can use final fixative on it. Um, mm -hmm. I would recommend the mat, not the gloss, because if you put mm -hmm. gloss on, it's like trying to do colored pencil on your window. Yeah. 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 Personally, <laughs> so I well. don't, personally, I don't like gloss uh, because it just doesn't, yeah. it competes with colored pencil. Yeah. It does. Uh, and what happens with gloss, if you spray a gloss on, on a, say, a mixed media piece on paper, some of the pieces are going to come up shiny and the paper is going to be flat because the paper is so absorbent. It's going to keep absorbing that fixative into the surface. And it would take it takes a lot of mm -hmm. fixative to make it all shiny. So mm -hmm. that's why you put glass over it, because then it's all shiny. Yeah. <laughs> so, but yeah. the mat, the mat will make the other parts of the composition matte and the paper of course will be matte okay? and that's what a varnish does it also evens out the sheen of what you're working um, a fixative will do that and also a varnish will do that in a painting okay mm -hmm. it evens it out so in fixatives there's also a third one uh, because fixatives come in sprays okay you have a spray can mm -hmm. and um, sprays Sometimes um, you have to be careful with them. You have to, you know, not be in a rush. In fact, the first thing that I wanted marketing to do was put on the can was first ingredient, patience. <laughs> Everybody liked the idea, but nobody has done it because you get it and you're, you know, especially someone that's not doing it, they, have, you know, they get excited, they start spraying and then something goes wrong. You know, it's like, okay, take a couple breaths, back up. Also with fixatives, uh, you want to use light amounts, okay. not heavy, not heavy spray. You want to do light amounts. You want to be at least 18 inches away. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it's better to do short spurts okay. over it the first time, especially with uh, charcoal and pastels. Okay. Because with charcoal and pastels, it's powder. And here we have air pressure and liquid. Not good for anything that's powdery. Because yeah. the first thing it's going to do is going to blow it off the page. Mm -hmm. uh, or it's going to saturate it. And then what's going to happen is your color is going to change. Um, the value of the colors is, go is going to change. And, and many times it ruins, you know, ruins the drawing. So you end up doing going over it. Uh, so... You want to be careful with it and do short spurts. How many times do you think I should spray? You, you can do as many layers as you want. Okay. 
uh, then turn the piece and spray the other direction. Then, in, and wait in between, wait at least 10 to 20 minutes in between, and then look at the piece. That, you know, look at it, what we call raking the light. It's when you take it and hold it to the light, and look at it on an angle, mm -hmm. see if it's covered. Uh, because sometimes the sprays, you know, you might miss a spot. Um, so it's better to do do it that way and just uh, you'll get a good coverage. And you can you can spray as many coats as you want. Now for pastels, a lot of times I get calls, oh, I have to ship a pastel and I want to put a final fixative on. Mm -hmm. And I go, well, did you use any fixative in the in the painting while you were doing it? It's like, no. It's like, hmm. It's not going to work because you figure you have paper or board and you have a layer of pastel and I'll exaggerate it. Okay. You have a layer of pastel and now you're putting fixative on the outside layer. Mm -hmm. So guess what? It could slide. Okay. That fixative on top of the pastel creates like creme brulee. Okay, what I used to do uh, when I um, used to draw with pastels, I would fix every layer, but I wouldn't use any fixative at, on the, you know, on the top layer of my That's good. Board. Is yeah. that the right way of doing it? That's that? a good way to do it. Okay. That's a great way to do it is by putting, you know, fixing each layer mm -hmm. and then putting, you know, I, put, I always call it the icing on the pastel look rich. And you're going to put it under glass anyway, so nobody's going to touch it. And mm -hmm. you only have that thin layer of pastel that's that can actually move. It's that is actually the best way. And if someone's going to ship a pastel, it's going to hold up mm -hmm. much much better that way because from jostling it around, you're not going to have that pastel that fixative mm -hmm. move, and you know actually could chip off of the painting. It, what about colored pencil? Is it necessary to fix uh, the layers or it's okay to apply one, I mean, you, several top layers? Yeah, you could put just, you don't even have to put a fixative on it if okay. you don't want to. What I do with colored pencil when I'm working is I use, sometimes we'll use an alcohol marker. If I get something that's too shiny and it's too waxy, and I need mm -hmm. to be able to work on top of it, I'll take an, a, an alcohol marker. For okay. instance, like a Spectre AD, uh, you know, any of the alcohol markers are out there. Um, take the colorless blender and rub over it. And what the alcohol does with the wax, it actually melts it. Yeah. It, yeah. And then mm -hmm. it goes into the surface and you, you'll see it turn matte. It'll go mm -hmm. from shiny to matte. And then you can actually work on top of it. Uh, mm -hmm. but you know, when you're finished, you can use a fixative, but it's not really necessary. Okay. Uh, even in drawings, uh, many times I don't put a fixative on it because I know I'm going to, um, if I'm going to frame it, I'm going to put it under glass. Now for storage of those that you're not going to put fixative on, fixative on is to put some, uh, glassine mm -hmm. paper, uh, paper that's coated on both sides. Mm -hmm. Use that in between your drawings. It's actually good in between watercolors, uh, paintings, uh, uh, especially uh, when you're doing studies, uh, mm -hmm. especially drawings is the most prevalent is because regular paper will Smart. slide across it. Uh, what's the difference between glassine paper and wax paper? Is there a big difference? Uh, wax paper, you want to be careful of, especially where you live, because mm -hmm. the heat and humidity could cause that wax to stick to the paper. Okay. Because it is made with wax. Mm -hmm. um, parchment would work better, better than wax paper mm -hmm. uh, because that's a good separator. Mm -hmm. uh, glassine is what you know okay. basically yeah. I use for color charts anything anything mm -hmm. I'm sending I always wrap it in glassine on an acrylic painting or an oil painting you you never want to put the glassine on because what will happen is if there's any stickiness there especially in acrylic it will adhere to it uh, so you always want to have separation uh, between the paintings when 
when you're shipping those, okay? Mm -hmm. Drawings are a different story. One of the things that you had mentioned with in the beginning, you had said, well, on the labeling, we are, the art industry is so overregulated, mm -hmm. okay? At one time, it used to have all this information on the label. Now, today, we have to put all this language on that's given to us about what's in it and caution this, caution that. And it has to be done in sometimes three to six languages. Yeah. Wow. So, uh, so it's like, okay, that's that's the, the warnings that have to go on. They We need to have those warnings, but it's it's gotten kind of ridiculous. And the craziness it causes is that everybody gets confused. Okay? Yeah. But how hazardous are they? Like, um, they are hazardous. You should not. You should always spray in a ventilated area. Um, I spray outdoors. Is it a bad okay. thing? Uh, yeah, no, that's a good thing. Okay. It's, a, it's okay. I always spray when I can in my garage. Okay. I have. I I took. Um, I take a from an, from getting shipped paper. I'll take a box that's twenty two by thirty. Mm -hmm. And I cut the top off so I have sides on it like this big. And then I laid a piece of work in it and then I spray it. That way it contains the spray. It's not getting all over. Mm -hmm. And also if there's any air coming through, those four inch high sides help protect that airflow. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, one of the things about using sprays and especially a matte spray is you always want to be spraying in a temperature of 60 to 65 degrees Fahrenheit. It's quite cool. Why is that? <laughs> well, because if it's an acrylic resin, they stop drying at 50 degrees, 50 to 55 degrees, they stop drying. So that means if I spray when it's say today it's 50 degrees here, if I spray that varnish is not going to dry it's going to dry very, very slow. So instead of drying within, say, 10 to 15 minutes, it could mm -hmm. take an hour. Um, so that's temperature is it's necessary for that temperature. Mm -hmm. um, liquid varnish is the same way. Uh, if you're putting a liquid varnish on, you want to make sure that temperature is above 60 degrees. Well, and you have to have good ventilation. So where I my studio and uh, office is now, I don't have a good ventilation system. So I can only varnish and spray um, in later spring through summer into fall. Oh. Or un unless we have a 60 degree day, which I think we're supposed to have one next week, then I will drag. In fact, I have a thermometer in my garage and a humidity gauge. And I look at the humidity and temperature before I spray. Uh, humidity is a is a bigger problem because mm -hmm. um, you cannot, you should not spray when the humidity is over 65%. It's always over 65 in Florida. I, <laughs> yeah, well, 65, as long as it's not over 65, you don't want it to, you know, you could go to 70, but 65 mm -hmm. is the optimum. And the reason why is because um, you know how condensation attracts to mm -hmm. the windows, when you have a difference. Yeah. Um, well, when you have a lot of humidity and you take your drawing outside, it is dry and it's very absorbent and into the paper, okay? It's gonna soak into the paper. And when you go to spray it, you're actually spraying on top. And if it's on in the paper, guess what? It's gonna be on top of your color pencil or your, whatever you're drawing. Uh, and then when you spray, you're actually spraying on top of a water vapor. Oh, so, I see. Okay. And that causes, that could, you know, most of the solvents will dissipate that water vapor, but um, what happens is with the matting agent in sprays, it will cause it to go cloudy. Mm -hmm. We call that blooming. So if you've ever sprayed something and then saw, you know, kind of this cloudy underneath, that's the blooming caused by humidity. So, um, you know, that's why it would be great if they had uh, water-based um, 
fixatives and uh, varnishes that could be used it any basically at a good temperature, but didn't matter about humidity. Uh, but they weren't toxic because see the the solvents and varnishes all have either uh, like a mineral spirits or that type of substance in it. Mm -hmm. That's the toxic part. You don't want to you're spraying that vapor. You don't want to be breathing that. Mm -hmm. um, also, there's resin in there and there's a matting agent. So when you spray a lot of that, you don't want to be breathing that because it goes into your lungs. And that's mm -hmm. not, a, not a good thing. There is one uh, particular fixative that uh, you can spray uh, that's less toxic. And that is um, what the old masters used. It was casein. Okay. Casein is basically if you take milk and vinegar and put it together, it curdles mm -hmm. like cottage cheese. You let that dry, grind it up, add alcohol and water. You have casein fixative. Huh. That's a simple, simple recipe. There is one product out there called Spectrafix. Okay. Okay. Um, this is a casein spray, and it's a pump spray, so you can mm -hmm. spray it and. It, this is something I could use here during the winter for spraying a drawing because I don't have to worry about going outside. I don't want to spray inside because then with hot air, a hot air system, guess what? When you spray, it goes through the whole house. Yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah. So, so a, a good casein spray is, is good. Look for one of these. It has a very, very fine mist. Because mm -hmm. the big thing with spray bottles is that you get spurts, sometimes of bigger droplets than you want. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's good to stay back when you're spraying. So that's something that can be used inside. Um, again, a lot less toxic because when this has alcohol in it and uh, the alcohol that actually they kind of concentrate that you mix vodka, water mm -hmm. and the concentrate together. And now you've got your spray because vodka is 100% alcohol, and mm -hmm. that's better than denatured alcohol, which is evaporates very, very quickly. So you can't use that type of alcohol, and um, the isopropyl alcohols don't work as, as well either. Can you tell us how to use a varnish that are like a liquid varnish. I often see videos on Instagram when artists um, varnish their art with, uh, with the brush and stuff. Uh, I find that it's difficult for me to repeat this kind of varnishing because I have dust piling in and it just seems like there is no control over uh, yes. br brushing. So uh, can you explain how to do it? Yeah, when you're varnishing a painting, uh, one of the things you want to make sure is there's no dust on the painting. So if it's been sitting in the studio, mm -hmm. the best thing to do is basically take a lint-free cloth and dust it off. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then one of the things that drives me absolutely nuts about the internet is that... Um, I, in fact, I called somebody out on it the other day. They have a painting and what they do is they take the varnish and dump it on the painting. Yeah. That you never do. Okay. Uh, and the, then the person, the artist said, oh, well, it was a small painting. And I go, a small painting, big painting, you always have to think about your audience and who's listening. Because if you have someone that has never varnished before and they see that part, they're going to, that's what they're going to remember. Oh, just dump it on. I always use a jar. I use these okay. little condiment dishes. Mm -hmm. I pour my varnish in there. You want to use a nice soft um, brush. This, mm -hmm. I used to use a natural hair brush, but now that they're harder to get and they're more expensive, I found that these synthetic brushes work very, very well. Okay. And uh, what I would do is just dip and I study, I actually did some varnishing. So I dip the brush in and then brush onto your surface. I use an X pattern when I'm brushing. Okay. Okay. Start at one corner. Okay. And keep going down across. 
you have a big painting, you have to, you know, start at one side and keep going. When you get over to this side and say it's 30 inches across, guess what? By the time you get down here, this is going to be starting to dry. Right, Do right. It. Don't go back over it. Okay. Don't cut, just let it go. Because mm -hmm. if it's starting to dry and you brush over it, it's going to cause streaks. Mm -hmm. With the best thing to do is let it dry and then do a second coat. Okay. Do a second coat, a light coat in those or in touch up in those areas. Because varnish is very self-leveling. So if if I had to touch up an area, it would... Uh, when you dump the varnish on, you end up usually with a lot of varnish in the center of the painting and you brush it out and you think you got it brushed out and you're going to end up with a puddle. And then they set the painting up and you start getting these runs. The, the varnish starts to run. Mm -hmm. And that is very difficult to remove because it's thicker. Mm -hmm. And uh, the best thing once uh, a painting is varnished is to hang it close to the ceiling. Okay, behind me, you can see there's some color charts up there. Mm -hmm. That's where I would put the painting as close to the ceiling as possible uh, because that's where all the hot air goes. And so it'll be warmer up there than it will be down here. And that helps the drying process. Okay. okay? Uh, also, you know, humidity does affect the drying time. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's why today in our air conditioned houses, uh, it's, it works a lot better. Um, or if you have, uh, you know, the air on, but you have like your room there, it looks like you have some nice windows and you have the sun mm -hmm. coming in. So it's going to warm it up, but you're keeping that air temperature, just the humidity adjusted. So, mm -hmm. uh, that'll help the dry, the dry, the varnishes. Varnishes, uh, dry very quickly. They should dry in about, uh, 10 to 15 minutes, mm -hmm. but when it's sitting up there, it's going to you know, continue to dry and cure, which is always a good thing. I always let them set and then varnish again if I have to. Mm -hmm. So always, you know, dip the brush in and varnish. Never, never dump it in mm -hmm. uh, because, you know, people will try that. And on a big painting, <laughs> it's a terrible thing to try to move that varnish around when it's trying to dry. Mm -hmm. Okay. And also, when you do that, you have all that solvent evaporating in your face. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's why you want to, you know, put it down. And as you're brushing, it'll actually start to evaporate in that corner. That's why you do want some good ventilation. One of the best places to uh, varnish is in your bathroom because you have a vent fan. Mm -hmm. Turn the vent fan on. Mm -hmm. That's what I do away. sometimes. <laughs> I used to do that. I had one, I had a spare bathroom in, in a condo mm -hmm. I was in. That was my spray booth. Mm -hmm. I actually put cardboard up around the mirrors, around the sidewall. I had it, the sink built up so I could put my box there. And I had a little frame made so I could set the box on it. And uh, I would turn the vent fan on. I would spray in there. I would brush in there. And then when I was done, out the door, close the door, and what happens? It would take all that, uh, all that out out of the building, out of the house. As far as varnishes go, there are liquid varnishes that you describe, like uh, using the brush, and there are yes. uh, spray varnishes. Um, yes, there are. Uh, which one do you prefer? Which one is more? I don't know. I prefer liquid. Is Liquid? Why? What? What's the reason? Uh, because I feel like I'm in more control putting it on when I brush it on. Okay. I can see the results instantaneously. With a spray, you're spraying across, and you, you know, do you always get a right coverage? And then you got to turn it and spray again. And if you spray too much, it runs. Matte varnishes are more susceptible to humidity, mm -hmm. so it's. I prefer. I always did. Well, when I started painting, that's all we had is liquids. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, so it, that's how I started. And I still prefer to use the liquid varnish. Okay. And, uh, because again, sprays work, but you have to be more careful with them uh, to make sure that you get a good coverage. I see. And so 
And when you spray, you're spraying a lot. It's going all over the place. Mm -hmm. Where when I'm going on with a liquid, where the varnish and brush go, that's the only place it's going. It's not going, you know, mm -hmm. spraying all around. I'm not breathing the resin and the matting agent and the solvent. I I'm see. Okay. basically the, just the solvent to contend with. Okay. I had one thing I had in my notes here is okay. that on fixatives, mm -hmm. hairspray is not a fixative. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. I didn't even think of that. <laughs> oh, I do because I used to get that question so many times that I'd be lectured, especially for art groups. Oh, I use hairspray and I go, oh, sticky. <laughs> and on a painting, it's like, no, you don't want to put that on a painting. Oh, okay. Wow. No. So, uh, <laughs> you know, and as far as uh, on a painting, if, if you've started a painting with charcoal and now you want to uh, do a fixative on there uh, to hold it so you could paint, mm -hmm. um, you want to put a very light coat of workable fixative on, put a coat of that on and let it set for a day. Mm -hmm. Too often people will spray it and go right to work on it. And they go, oh, my drawing's smudged. Well, yeah. <laughs> Resins need time to cure. Okay. okay. They need time to set up. So you want to wait. Um, I always just used some solvent and went over all my lines uh, that way. But you can also use the casein, the, the spe like, mm -hmm. like the casein fixative. Uh, that way, once you put it on, it's not coming off. It's going to be on there. The solvent will not move it. Okay. Cause okay. it's not soluble with say a mineral spirits or a, a linseed oil. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that'll work. There are a lot of different brands of uh, varnishes and fixatives. Is there a difference uh, in that or it's just personal preference? Um, there are, there may be some differences uh, in them. I have not really, studied a lot of them mm -hmm. uh, one that i i used to use many years ago was blair 105 which is low order fixative okay uh because i had a problem you know breathing this stuff mm -hmm. i was starting to be affected by solvent so i used that but uh when you have a low order fixative you have to use more of it so i found mm -hmm. that on uh the low order workable fixative i was going to spray something which is actually a good thing because when you're putting it down, you're putting this thin layer on. And then what would happen is you would just have to spray it maybe twice, three times or more. But that's the only one I really had any experience with is the uh, Blair 105, um, which I still use in situations because if, you know, it depends when I can spray and if I have mm -hmm. something I need to do, it's like, okay, I can use that in a vented area and, you know, it's not going to smell as strong as regular fixatives. Okay. Mm -hmm. But the casein also works in that situation. So when that came out, it was like, oh, I could use that. I know that some of the other brands, some have a ketone based rather than acrylic based because that's what was available at the time. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't know a lot about the other fixatives. Mm -hmm. uh, they pretty much, I would, I would assume, you know, and I hate to assume anything, but uh, I would always test it, okay? Is the, that's the most important thing is to test the spray. Uh, a lot of times artists will take the spray and go right to the drawing or right to the painting. So you take a magazine, or an advertising newspaper that's glossy and spray it on there. See if it's shiny. See if it's matte. Okay. Shake it up real well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is the first thing. Then spray it on some surface that's uh, non absorbent to see how, how it's going to look. Mm -hmm. um, other thing is uh, cleaning the nozzle. Once you've sprayed, what you want to do is turn the can upside down, mm -hmm. okay, and then push the button and let it spray until nothing's, it's just air. Okay. What that does is it cleans the nozzle because on uh, anything that has, especially matte uh, sprays and fixatives, 
um, the matting agent will stick inside that little tube mm -hmm. and in the nozzle, and then it won't work. So you want to clear it. Also, store your spray in an area if you're in cold weather, store it inside. 55 degrees. It's not 60, it's 55 degrees, and I want to spray something. Um, I would take the can from the house outside. And uh, what I would do is actually put the, uh, take my artwork out, spray it, bring the can inside with me. Mm -hmm. Don't leave it outside mm -hmm. because this, you don't want this to get colder. Okay, aerosols are cool inside anyway because of the propellant, but you want to bring it inside. And then normally what I'll do is after I've sprayed for, uh, and it's been out there maybe 10, 15 minutes, I bring it in because most of the solvent has evaporated. So I'll bring it in. There still will be some odor, but it's not going to be yeah. dissipating like as if you were spraying inside. Mm -hmm. So I will, I will do that. But sometimes people will go out and spray. They leave the painting there, they leave the can there, and then they come in, they have a cup of coffee, they go back out, you know, half hour later, and they try to spray again. That's not, that's not a good thing. Do I varnish an acrylic painting? Okay. Yes, you do varnish acrylic paintings. Okay. And um, the best thing to do is use um, acrylic medium and varnish first. Okay. Okay, that's the milky stuff that you use that in in your painting process. Uh, once the painting is is dry, you put a coat of that on top. I'm uh, sorry, you said to use um, uh, acrylic medium as a varnish. Yeah, it's called acrylic medium and varnish. And varnish. Okay, everybody makes one. Okay. Yeah, it says a medium and varnish. Okay. Uh, so when the painting's been, you know, is dry, you put a coat of that over the whole painting. Okay. And then you let it set for three days. And mm -hmm. then you put your varnish on top of it. Oh, wow. Oh, why is that? Why do you need... Because the acrylic takes three days. Actually, it dries. Acrylic dries. And most people don't understand the chemistry of acrylic. But it dries very quickly, like in 20 minutes, mm -hmm. half hour. In Florida, an hour because of the humidity. Mm -hmm. Humidity is actually good for acrylic painters because it keeps the paint wet longer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but when that paint film dries, it then goes through a chemical process that we call coalescence, okay. which means the particles start to come together in a chemical process and get form a tighter, tighter bond. And we call that the paint film. And it takes about three days for that, actually that process to happen. Okay. So um, I know I've had people paint underpaintings with acrylic and then they said, oh, I want to put some oil on top of it. Mm -hmm. You need to wait three days. But more important is when you gesso a canvas, mm -hmm. you want to wait three days before you paint with oils on top of that mm -hmm. because you have to let that gesso form into a paint film oh okay so so yes when you're you want to varnish an acrylic painting because remember that environmental smudge mm -hmm. um actually i had a painting that was wrapped and uh was put in storage after a show and i didn't unwrap it and when i went to unwrap it months later it was during the summer one foot this was a painting that's four foot four foot by three foot one foot off the ground was full of mold. Oh yeah. And so I thought, okay, I'll remove the mold. You know, and you get, you know about mold and mm -hmm. mildew. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I put it in the sun first of all, and then I looked up and did some made a solution to put on top of it, and I was able to get it off the surface. But some of the mold actually went into the paint film, and I couldn't get it out. Yeah. And I'm sure there's probably a method that I could have, you know, went to a conservator and had it done, but it was too intricate to repaint. Um, so I just left it that way and I still have the painting, you know, one day I'll go back and try to fix it, but uh, it's like, okay. Uh, but you do want to varnish because see if it, 
it had varnish on it and um, it had mold, I could remove it easily because it's not going to go into the surface. Up in the varnishing is once you put that medium and varnish on, that's what we call an intermediate layer. You then put your um, picture varnish on top. Okay, mm -hmm. which is the varnish that you could use on either oils or acrylics. Mm -hmm. And you would put that on top. Um, that varnish is removable. So if you ever had to clean the painting, you could use mineral spirits, remove that varnish, and that other layer of varnish, that intermediate layer that you had on, protects mm -hmm. the color, protects the original acrylic painting. You wouldn't believe how many oil painters I've talked to that have paintings that you know, are 20, 30 years old that have never been varnished. Okay, <laughs> have never been varnished. And uh, I read that um, artists should wait for at least six months uh, to, yes. varnish, uh, to varnish a finished painting. Is that true? That's true. You okay. do want to wait that long for a final varnish. For a final? Um, okay. For a final varnish. Now, you can use what they call a retouched varnish. Mm -hmm. uh, what a retouch varnish is, it's like taking the final varnish and adding in a picture varnish and add uh, about a four to one mixture of mineral spirits and you create a retouch varnish. I see. And what that does is that because it's all solvent and a little bit of resin, it evens out the sheen of the painting mm -hmm. and any spots that sink mm -hmm. uh, will even it out and uh, protects the painting until you can do the final varnish. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it's just part of oil painting. And most people, it's like, oh, well, I got to ship the painting. And it's like, I, you better switch to acrylics if you want to do that, because uh, you know what? I wouldn't buy your painting if, mm -hmm. you know, I wouldn't buy your painting as if, you know, because it was done, not, it's not going to last, especially if it's worth a lot of money. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you're selling piece of artwork mm -hmm. uh, and that's just the nature of oils what's going to happen if uh, the painting the oil painting is varnished too quickly uh, and shipped out it could eventually crack okay. okay because because what happens is oil paint again dries in a certain mm -hmm. say days or a week mm -hmm. uh, depending on what you're using um, but oil paint continues to dry for many, many years, sometimes as long as 10, 15, 20 years, depending mm -hmm. on the thickness of the paint. Um, it oxidizes, which means that it's slowly shrinking. It shrinks, and it what will happen is if you have, again, like creme brulee, you have this crust on the top, and now you have this paint that's moving underneath. Mm -hmm that top layer could crack. Now it can be fixed because you can remove that varnish mm -hmm. and apply another varnish. So, uh, but you have to, you know, let in six months is about the time they figured it's pretty much tradition uh, of letting that paint sit and uh, before you would varnish it. I recommend that if anybody does use a retouch varnish on and the painting is sold, is to put a note on the back of your paintings and say, on this date, take, you know, the painting should be varnished with the brand of varnish you want on your painting because mm -hmm. it's your artwork. Um, and put that note on there. Now, if it's sold through a gallery, they could bring it back to the gallery or they could take it to an artist, take it to someone, or if they're, in, they're familiar with varnishing, they could then varnish it themselves. Mm -hmm. um, if the gallery doesn't want to do that, then they're responsible. Mm -hmm. Okay, because guess what? They, but you know, your name's on the painting, so that's why I would always argue: is like, sorry, this is my painting. Yeah, you represent me, and I'm not taking work away from you. They could come back to you; you varnish it. But it is your painting, and if they put the wrong stuff on there, it's you know, it's not going to work. Because you get somebody that doesn't know anything about varnishes, they're going to go to Home Depot and they're going to buy some polyurethane, which is never, <laughs> and they're going to varnish the painting. Or 
or they're going to put something on it, some kind of clear coat, and it's not going, it's going to, it could be a disaster. Okay, so I, in fact, I sent a commission out last November, and of course, the person is nearby, and I said, I'll see you in six months, because I did put a retouch varnish on, and I will pick up the painting in a couple months, and I'll do a final varnish on there for him, and then let it dry, give it back to him. So uh, varnishing is, you know, the process of painting takes time. Again, mm -hmm. like I said, the first word on everything should be patience. <laughs> What's the distance between the art and the varnish uh, when you use a spray varnish? Like what would be the correct um, of spray? I, I always start at about 18 inches away, 18. about a foot and a half. Okay. Okay. And like I say, I'll hold it back and spray the first one because the further you get away, the more of the solvent can dissipate before it hits the surface. Mm -hmm. And especially with charcoal pastels, I will hold it back because when I, and I, and I did some tests on this and I show that if you're too close and you spray, it changes. If you stay back mm -hmm. and spray and light sprays, your colors are not going to change. So I will start back at 18 inches. Mm -hmm. And then once I've put maybe two or three coats on, mm -hmm. then, then I'll come in a little closer. Okay. Because I already know that that mm -hmm. surface is sealed. And you can tell if a surface is sealed, especially mm -hmm. if it's a pastel, is just take your finger and touch it. Yeah. Completely. Just tap on it. And if you start seeing the pastel come off, you know it's not fixed. Mm -hmm. Or same with charcoal. So then you would then add a little bit more, but it's better to do a little further, not too, too far away. If you're going two feet and beyond, then basically most of the resin and matting agent are going to fall on there as dry particles. Because mm -hmm. what you'll happen then is you'll see, for instance, on, and I've done this where I've, I've tested at different lengths, and if you're back too far, then you get a white powder on top of the drawing. Mm -hmm. And that white powder is the matting agent, I you see. know, and, okay. and dry resin. Mm -hmm. So about 18 inches is good to start and then come, come forward. Uh, same with a varnish on a painting. Uh, if you're going to put it, start back uh, about 12 to 18 inches, 15 inches and spray across completely and for especially for the first coat because you don't you don't want to get a concentration where it runs okay on that makes a lot of sense also with the, the fixative that you were mentioning about distance um if this is my painting and say i'm spraying i don't spray directly at it okay, okay. this is 90 degrees i would actually spray at a distance like this Huh. Okay. okay. So where I'm spraying, I'm spraying at the top edge and coming this way. Uh -huh. Okay. Because from that distance, it's, remember, there's air pressure. Here, mm -hmm. the air is hitting it directly. So mm -hmm. if I'm going this way, the air is going to hit it from a little bit of different, kind of deflect it a little. Mm -hmm. So it's not going to, you know, push it off the paper. But if you stay 18 inches away, especially on that first spray, you won't have to worry about that. But I don't direct, I don't do a direct spray. In fact, anybody that's ever called me, I said, don't directly spray at the at okay. your drawing. If you do get blooming, mm -hmm. if you spray it with a gloss fixative. Okay. Okay. Spray it with a gloss fixative. There's enough just solvent and resin in there that it will actually help remove that blooming. Then once you're, it's dry, you can then come back and respray it. If it's too shiny, you don't mm -hmm. like the shininess. If, if it does come out shiny, you can actually um, then put a matte fixative on top of it. But your advice is to contact uh, the company that the artist is using, um, you know, the fixatives. Yeah, it, the best thing you can call, if it's one, contact me about a product, uh, somebody else's product. Um, feel free to call that company, you know, contact mm -hmm. them. Like I say, 
I would rather answer an inquiry of how to do it rather than how to fix it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> also, one of the things too that just popped in exactly when I said that, you know, how to fix it. Um, if you're spraying on top of ink and markers, always test that. For instance, uh, spray fixatives on top of Sharpie marker mm -hmm. doesn't work real well. It will oh. actually make the Sharpie bleed. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay. And I've had, I had a situation. Somebody had done this piece of artwork and they did some outlining in Sharpie. They sprayed it and the black oh just like oh. all over. And it was like, okay, you can remove the varnish and it'll remove the Sharpie. But one of the things too, is when you're using somebody's products, remember that some are dye based, some are pigmented based. Mm -hmm. um, if they're a dye based, they can fade and they will change color over time. And some varnishes will uh, help protect that if they have a UV inhibitor. Mm -hmm. uh, so a UV inhibitor will work in keeping it like black or red or blue longer, but it will actually fade faster than a pigmented ink. Okay. But it's always good to uh, test that. It's just like some people will use uh, inks and then they'll use alcohol markers. Well, alcohol is one of the things that's used in pen cleaners. And guess what? <laughs> when you go over the ink line, if it hasn't had time to cure, mm -hmm. again, inks are like paint, they have to cure. Uh, if it's too soon, the alcohol will actually uh, remove some of uh, the alcohol marker will remove some of the ink. So there's a lot to think about, um, especially in, and this all came about really with mixed media. You know, mm -hmm. we were only using one media and uh, like pastel and you were just doing a pastel drawing. It was simple, but now when you're doing um, acrylics and pastel on top of that, and, and I know because I do mixed media, but I always have to think, okay, what's the process? Um, what's soluble, what's not, um, what am I going to put on top of this? And uh, so, and then how am I going to frame it? How am I going to present it? So mm -hmm. you, you, there's a lot to think about when you're doing artwork, as you know, <laughs> it's like, it's great having all the ideas, but then it's like, okay, what are we going to do with this now that we did it? So, so what's one thing every artist must know about varnishes and fixatives? Just one thing. Okay, they should know one thing. They should know the difference. Okay, so varnish and which, is for and which one is appropriate. Okay, and varnish is for painting, fixative. and fixatives are for drawing media. Right, right. Okay. Yep, and that's which one is appropriate. So that would be probably the the first the starter point. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> and then after that is use them safely. <laughs> oh yeah okay <laughs> to test yeah the third test one. and evaluate always so mm -hmm. all right awesome well thanks so much ed i thank you you're very welcome appreciate your time and uh you know whatever product you're using if you go to the websites um of that manufacturer i know we're always updating our stuff and it'll be more now that COVID happened you're going to see more video content mm -hmm. from manufacturers. That's good. Uh, that's very Which is excellent. I, mm -hmm. I think that's perfect because, you know, up to this point, it was like, okay, YouTube and, you know, <laughs> not, not always correct. You know, mm -hmm. thank you very much. I hope this wasn't too long. No, you. no, that's great. I, I really appreciate that. Thank you so okay. much. Good to finally see you and meet you in person. <laughs> yeah, good to see you too. A thousand miles away across the air. Yeah, <laughs> take care. Have a great day. <laughs> Bye.